Dr. Elisa Leach, and I'm chair of the committee. I hope everyone can hear me. We've got a problem with the microphone this evening, so uh, we're all struggling a little bit. Um, my role this evening is to ensure that the committee runs smoothly, having regard to procedure, behaviour, and ethics. To explain to the rest of the people on the table here tonight are, to my immediate right, with a group of guests. <laughs> As the council solicitor, who will give advice to the committee on any procedural or legal matters that might arise. To my left and to the back of me are the council's planning officers, highway engineer and environmental health officer, who will present the application this evening and give any technical advice to the committee which may be sought. The rest of the people who you see down both sides of the tables are the elected members who will consider the applications this evening and make the decisions. Before each application is considered, there will be a short presentation by the planning officers. In the event that an application has received a qualified petition signed by 25 signatures or more, one representative of the petition will be invited to address the committee in support of the petition for up to five minutes. If a petitioner addresses the committee, then the applicant or their agent will be invited to make representations to the committee in support of their application, again for up to five minutes. However, if a petitioner does not address the committee, then the applicant or their agent will not be invited to make any representations. A ward councillor can address the committee in relation to an application. The ward councillor may, may speak uh, on behalf of the residents However, once they have, the ward council has returned to the public gallery, <coughs> they may not return to take part in any debate that may be followed by the committee. The application then will be open to debate and discussion by members of the planning committee who will then make a decision on the application. If the site visit is requested and approved by the committee, then that, that matter will not be dis discussed this evening and will be discussed, uh, discussed even as a subsequent meeting. Okay. Uh, could I have the uh, members' approval of the minutes, please? On yes, pages one to fourteen. To save the officer, standing over the wires, I'll sign them, sign them at the end. Um, are there any declarations of interest? Uh, yes. I think, uh, Chair, um, I'd like to declare an interest in agenda item six, which is a land report called the Rockborough. Um, for the old deep food store of half past five, virtue of the pecuniary interest uh, in the public side works for uh, have just for a parole. Okay, thank you. At the end of it. Okay, are there any requests for site visits? Happy? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, agenda item eight, three residential home homes being closed as well. Um, I think a site visit would be. Uh, So that the committee can fully appreciate the land levels and the detrimental effect on the residential properties affected. Okay, are there any others like Irene? I didn't ask to ask for a site visit on number six, which is the size of the nature. The size of the nature is not. Thank you. Steve? Yes, Chair, item number five, uh, as a, uh, I think there are some concerns about loss of the existing car parking and also its uh, location next to one of the busiest thoroughfares in the in forest. So I think that will benefit from that site. So um, we've been asked to uh, address the site visits on agenda item five, which is as for stores. Agenda item 6, land at Paul Coldway, Bromborough, and agenda item 8, Cleveland Residential Home, Old Good Road, Heswell. Are the committee happy to approve those? Yes, we are. Okay. okay, for the members of the public who are actually being for these agenda items, as I said in my opening speech, that, that we won't be able to discuss those again this evening. So if you would like to leave any more, I think we can leave that.
subdivision of an existing plant and the erection of a new detached dwelling. The housed property is currently Ashbourne House, which sits above the application site and is accessed via Mount Avenue. The site itself sits lower than Ashbourne House and is directly opposite the boundary for lower housing conservation area. Although it sits outside the conservation area, given its proximity, care should be given to ensuring that the development would not harm the character or setting of that conservation area. The proposed new building is contemporary and modern in design, and the use of a mixed palette of materials will help the new building harmonise with its surroundings and make a positive contribution to the area. Whilst the proposal is modern and does not seek to replicate more traditional properties within the area, it is considered that this contemporary approach will add a new dimension and character to this part of Heswell. The new property will be set considerably lower than the property to the rear, ensuring privacy and outlook are maintained. Additionally, the new dwelling is set in line with existing properties that are located on this side of the mount, and separation distances are all exceeded. Access to the site will be via the mount, and adequate visibility of the sight lines will be achieved to ensure safe vehicular access. It's considered that the proposed new dwelling accords with the criteria set out for new residential development in policy HS4 and would contribute positively to the character of the area. It is not considered to develop and harm the setting of the adjacent conservation area and is therefore recommended for approval that uh, there is a qualified petitioner objection. If I can just go to the other side of the room to show you the plans. <coughs> This road here, that's, that's Mount Avenue. This is Ashbourne House, which fronts up to uh, Mount Avenue. And the proposed uh, new dwelling is, is here um, at the rear of the site. We access via the mount. So you'll be able to come in off the mount, turn around, and leave in a forward gear. In terms of the um, so this this property here at the back. So that sits um, considerably higher um, than the application property. Uh, this property here is Carlton House, I think it's called. And for those members who are on the site visit, um, that's the one that we went to at the end of the site visit with the day nursery at the back. This is the application site here. So this, um, this building is what's proposed. And uh, this building here, I forget the name of this house, but this site, this sits for instance sits slightly further back from, um, from the application site. Um, and on the bottom, this is the, uh, this is the, the, the you can see the day nursery here. That's the outbuilding. Uh, for those members who are on the site, uh, the, the boundary wall, um, uh, which we, we added an extra condition, which is on the list, uh, to do with um, construction and uh, management plan for that. And finally, so that you can This house it does sit considerably higher from the application site. It's located about 36 metres back from the rear elevation of um, uh, the proposed new dwelling. So if you need any, um, if you've got any questions, I'll come back to them. Okay, do you want the site and all the elevations of
to have seen it to have seen the difference in level. I mean, we're talking thank about you, four meters. Thank you. 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 Thank
some semblance of control over the construction process. So having said that, our role in this committee is to decide whether that particular building in that particular location is a suitable solution for that area. Now, I think a lot of us could argue, it may be out of character with the area, that it's an unneighbourly development in terms of certain issues associated with how it will look by the time it's finished. And of course, there is the point that's been raised about the loss of that uh, sandstone wall. I think we need to take all those things into consideration. But my own personal view at the moment, I want to listen to what other people say, is I don't think that we have sufficient grounds for refusing this application based on what has been put forward. But I'd be interested to hear what other people have to say. I, think I just wanted to make a comment about um, Steve's <coughs> comments about the area. Just that sort of monitoring role, is it? I think I'm right in saying, I'd like Matthew, if you like, to, to tell me what the process is. Not necessarily even just for this. For example, there's a piece of land, I want to put a house on it. Nobody can see any problems with me having a house on it, there probably used to be a house there, whatever. The planning committee would say, yes, no problem with the house there, then what? You know, you can't just flash a house up and uh, apply for that. That's the first point, which, which hopefully. So planning looks at whether something's appropriate and appropriate use of land <coughs> and the building break side of it. Well that deals with the, um, the technical side of it, whether something's um, structurally sound, um, that everything is done right in, in terms of the building process. So that's the next stage. I mean there may be other commissions that need to be sought as well. Um, there may be um, party war that, that might need to, to be um, complied with. And there may be health and safety. They're, set, they're, they're regulated through a separate process, not a planning process. 
especially a, a, a year steer on, on what the, uh, the Hazel Society seems to be saying that it is a piece of land that will probably be able to take a development. It, it, it appears um, strange as it sounds in regard to the, the, the house to do so. It is quite too long. None of the others on the road are. The, the thing that involves that, uh, not so much about the design of the actual building, but the impact on the conservation area. And that's where my concern uh, lies. So far, I've heard from two more councillors who are concerned about the loss of the, the wall, um, which clearly, even though it's the other side, if you like, of the arbitrary line, down the middle uh, of, of the road, will impact on uh, the conservation area. That's the point that the Hesworth Society seems to make, and it appears to be the, the, the point that the other councillors are making. So, I, I, the concern that I have is that the development that we have in front of us is harmful to the conservation area. And if we were looking at this maybe as an <coughs> outline plan commission, here's a piece of land, if you can get it right, then we have an exceptional source of development to come. But I'm not convinced, given the feedback that we get from all councils and in particular the Conservation Society, um, that this is perhaps the right development for the piece of land. And again, I feel it's, it's, it's that sort of balance that, that probably we have as a council and board that has a conservation
didn't go on the site visit. Um, and when I listened to the, the main objector and then Andrew speaking about the concerns, alarm bells ring, ringing with me. And I'm not technically minded, but I am swayed by what David said, who is technically minded. And it is what we're deciding tonight is outline planning permission. And as Matthew said, so full application. So, so as Matthew said, it's it's monitored. We as a council have a duty of care, so we can take that very seriously. And then, if the application goes ahead, it will be closely monitored with safety right along along the line. So that's that's. At first, I thought, goodness me. listen to what I've listened to, um, I can't see any grounds that we can we can make change. Okay. Um, Timber fences together with some trees screen this part of the site from advanced of the main. The boundary treatment would obscure the majority of the equipment from view. Uh, for those members who are on the site, again, there is another um, sandstone wall and some, some fencing that runs along the boundary with um, with advanced um, main. So, uh, in terms of the, the height, there's a tower, uh, and the, the highest point of, of, that, of that tower, the middle eight which is just 3.8 metres, um, the platform along which the, the children would play um, is just over 2 metres, so it would be, it would sit just in line with the, uh, the boundary wall and fence, which is <coughs> one side, because it would be seen. Um, it's not considered that the introduction of play equipment would result in any increased noise disturbance to local residents, but it is proposed to be sited in an area that's already used as an outdoor beer garden, 
translated away from the name of Japanese honor to know. It's considered that the proposal is acceptable and is recommended for approval. Uh, there's no qualifying additional objection. Thank you, Matthew. Is there a board council to speak There's a third condition I'm going to suggest to you, but 